Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about key differential analysis of lower extremity pain. Key differential analysis issue. Majority of lower extremity pain due to pathology within extremity. Also arthritis of hip or knee. Miniscale pathology. Tenderness or ligamentous injury, trauma, deep venous thrombosis, infection, inflammation, neoplasts of soft tissue and bone, neurogenic leg pain due to impigmentation, on distal cord or Nerve root in spinal canal, neuroformin foramina, or retroperitoneum. Also consider vascular claudication as a remote source of lower extremity pain. Intervertebral disc valves. Diffuse. 50% circumference, extension of this beyond its normal margin. This is an example. Of the this so axial T1 WI um, also the typical pattern of the lumbar broad base with the broad disc valves at L1 L5 S1 Y slip arrow indicate the disc extension beyond the with the broad body margin is diffuse and no focal production. And also uh, another example of this part, we can use a non-contrast enhanced CT. So this is axial non-enhanced contrast CT. After this, Go graphy so the raja tier is standing into middle one set of dorsal annulus with associated focal annular bars into the ven ven ventral epidural space. Intervertebral disc herniation. Classify morphologically. Protrusion wide and deep. Limit by adjacent and flat on sagittal image. Protrusion deeper than wide. Or extend beyond either adjacent and flat on such a thought image. Sequestration enated this not in the continuity with the remaining this. This is a digital T2 WI um, on so a very large this extrusion at the L4 L5 level wise lit arrow with severe effacement and mass effect upon the thicker side. Stenos acquires spinal lumbar. Multifactorial process relative lumbar canal stenosis less than 12 millimeter. Absolute lumbar canal stenosis less than 10 millimeter.
This is an example of canal stenosis. So axial G2 WIMO, so severe central canal stenosis by solid arrow indicated with the thicker sac assuming the triple apparent due to a bulging disc anteriorly and facet and ligamentous hypertrophy posterior laterally. Note the dosal directed synovesis from concomitant biastral disease. Y of N arrow indicated. Another example, sagittal T2 WIMO, so multi level severe central canal stenosis from bulging disc, ligamentous hypertrophy, and spondylolitis. Stenos foraminal lumbar. Multifactorial process, loss of fat within neural foramen on sagittal W1, uh, G1W1. So axial G1WI am also a typical pattern of lumbar broad base vertebra disc valves at R5S1, wisely arrow indicate. The disc extends and beyond the vertebral body margin is diffuse and no focal protrusion. Stenocongenital spinal. Developmental narrowing of lumbar canal and neural foramina due to short squat pedicle. Otherwise, man degenerative change in this and posterior element can result in symptomatic stenosis. The axial T2WI are also the typical pattern of alpha alpha central canal stenosis with a combination of acquired facet hypertrophy and congenital shortened Pedicle. Congenital short pedicle with narrow lateral recesses are uh, also demonstrated. Sagittal CT of the lumbar spine, so diffusely narrow AP diameter of the body canal in this 35 years old man with congenital spinal stenosis and low back pain. Spondylolithesis, displays of vertebra body relative to inferior vertebra direction. Enterolithesis, retrolithesis, degenerative, usually degenerative etiology, Lateral lithesis. Etiology, degenerative secondary to loss of intervertebral disc high and lasting laxity in facet joint spondylolithic traumatic. Sagittal steer um, also a grade one enterolithesis by slip arrow. Indicated of alpha on alpha, uh, alpha on alpha with moderately severe associated active and flat change. Modic Taiwan. Spondylolysis. The effect of pass in inter. Articularis may be unilateral or bilateral, classified into early progressive and terminal stage, more time. Hairline fracture of early stage often difficult to appreciate with CT. 
unilateral spondylolysis associated with increased risk of contralateral valve fracture. Coronal oblique radiograph so a scene loosened scene. Why solid arrow indicate in the right L5 PI with adjacent bony sclerotic margin? The file defect represents the color of the scotty dog. Lateral radiography so a defect and malangulation in alpha PI, Y open arrow. There is this high loss at alpha S1 with associated sclerotic and plate chain. sub bone CT retroformation in a patient with back pain so an alpha bar defect y solid arrow without anterolytosis, not the widening of the bar adjacent to the defect indicating chronic remodeling. Facet joint synovial cyst. Circumscribed cystic lesion associated with degenerative facet joint can cause canastenosis and imping on ipsilateral trends traversing or existing nerve root. Axial T2WI am also a large right size synovialis. Wise lead arrow indicate which have, have affects the right lateral aspect of the theca sac, not the severe bilateral facet degenerative change. Fair back surgery syndrome, continue low back pain, Radic radicular pain after lumbar surgery. Sagittal T2WI am also pre fusion of L4, L5, and L5 S1 right open arrow indicate with interbody fusion graft artifact. There is a largest extrusion at L3, L4 with superior migration consistent with a free fragment. Why solid arrow indicated? Cytor T1C plus all. So a moderate amount of peripheral enhancement surrounding the dish extrusion. At L3, L4, which is in, which is migrating superiorly behind the L3 body, why solid arrow indicated. Axial T1, T1, C plus M, MR, in a patient with pre laminectomy, so dorsal and right side enhancing peri-dural fibrosis, white slit arrow along the right lateral thicca sac. Post-operative surgery complication, cord abnormality, neurologic deficit, hardware failure, or malportion arising as direct or indirect result of bigger surgery include Alter biomechanic, accelerated disc degeneration, pseudo meningocell CSF leak, arachnoiditis, peridural fibrosis, recurrent generation, instability. Sagittal T2 WI 
um, also uh, an alcohol by laminectomy to make me a large post operative fluid collection, wisely arrow indicated, which severe effect the dosal thicca sign, wide open arrow indicated. Metastat, common primary is breast, lung, kidney, prostate. Lesion typically multiple, either lytic or sclerotic. On CT, typical, the hypointent T1, hypointent T2 signal on all more. Either epidural tumor or pathologic vertebra compression fracture can be on the root or cord. Axial T1C plus and also T12 renal cell carcinoma metastasis with an extensive epidural component compressing the conus medullaris, wise with arrow indicated. Abscess epidural para ventibral. Epidural fluid collection with myoperipro enhancement. Usually in setting of discitis or myelitis due to biochemic or mycobacterial infection. Can also be seen with inoculation arising from surgery or instrumentation, epidural catheter placement. So, sagittal T1, C plus, or also a typical appearance of extensive displaced infection and adjacent vertebra, also mitis at the alcohol fiber level with enhancement of epidural soft tissue, consistent with phlegmone, wide open arrow indicated to choose enhancement is also present from alcohol fiber vertebra body, wide slip arrow indicated. Hematoma, epidural, subdural. Um, or signal of blood product vary with age, subacute hemorrhage, sometimes difficult to differentiate from epidural fat on both T1 and FSE T2, another useful steer. Sagittal T2WI of all so dosal epidural hematoma from T12 R3, wisely arrow, causing severe canal stenosis and compressing the conus and cauda E9. Ependymoma maxero papillary spinal cord. Most common tumor of bonus metallaris and lumbar sacra canal, mark enhancement typically, can show sign of necrosis and hemorrhage, bone remodeling when large, scalloping or margin, and spinal canal foramenal enlargement. Sagittal so T1 C plus are also enlarged. Heterogeneous enhancing mass essentially filling the caudal thickal sac from T12 through L5 by solid arrow in the cave. Neurofibroma and spinoma. Both can manifest as transfer foraminal mass. Formina enlargement due to remodeling. Axial T2WI of all in this patient with NS1, so a cystic and solid right thoracic paravetabra mass, vaccinate arrow indicate with no intradural extension. Axial T2WI am also a right T12 R1 transformer mass with heterogeneously hypertension signal expanding the neural hormone 
signs of it at all, causing severe canastenosis and compression of the colonus megalari survives with arrow indicated. Arachnoiditis lumbar. Usually post-surgical complication, clamping of nerve root, MT sign, calcification and resolve. Axial T2WIMR, so very broad clamping of nerve root in the distal thickal sac, resulting in empty sac signs, not laminectomy at the level. Better spinal cord, cord normally terminate about L2, L3, level costume lesion, tie pillow terminal, this Rafis, Jastematomalia. Say so thought T1 WIM also uh, elongated, tethered spinal cord with short second pillow terminating in a small terminal lipoma, wise with arrow in the tail. Thank you.